I'm Eddie, the Skinhead Gourmet. Today we're making risotto. short grain rice. You can see these guys, a fat little kernel. But the process that we're going to be cooking them, it's going to be, we're going to take these, we're going to toast them just a little bit, and then we're going to slowly put warm chicken stock into them, continually stirring them, breaking down all the starches, until you end up with a nice, rich, creamy dish. And all of the stock and all of the flavor that, that those rice grains are going to absorb are just going to taste fantastic. In a lot of traditional Italian meals, it's served as its own course because it's you know, that flavorful and that full of a dish. If you're going to be serving it with anything, it has to be something with a big flavor. It's traditionally served with asabuco, and it's also a normal accompaniment to braised short ribs, which is what we're going to be pairing it with ourselves. So to get started with our risotto, I've got a saucepan that's been sitting and getting warm on a medium-high heat. And I've also got a small pot of chicken stock with a small amount of beef stock in it. You can use any sort of stock you like to make risotto. Tr chicken stock is very traditional and since I'm serving it with a beef dish, I am cutting a little bit of beef into it. You can also do it with a strict vegetable stock if you want to go strictly vegetarian. Or you can do it with a fish stock if you want to do a seafood risotto. But to start with, we're going to get some garlic and a little bit of butter, oil, or in our case, a little bit of duck fat mixed with butter into a pan. You're going to want it to warm up. We're using a Fiend's Herbs mix of parsley, sage, thyme, a little bit of rosemary, and a little bit of oregano. We're going to get that in. And then right on top, we're going to get our risotto. And we're going to get this a little bit toasted. This is going to be how we start it. Toasting it's going to give it a little bit of extra flavor. It's going to infuse with the flavors of the herbs a little bit more. It'll also get a little bit of a nuttier flavor from being toasted prior to its full-on cooking. Okay, we've had our risotto down in the pan, cooking in fat with the garlic and herbs for a few, about two minutes. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. You can see the pan's gone just about dry. And we're going to add a little bit of a dry white wine just to deglaze. You're going to want to get your spoon out. I know I'm kind of a stickler. I love to make my risotto with a well-seasoned wooden spoon. It's not 100% necessary, but it does seem to help. But what we're doing here is going to be the start of the entire process. We're letting, we're stirring and cooking the rice while it's absorbing a liquid. And we're doing this in short little snippets. And this is actually a somewhat of a long process where you're adding liquid, stirring, and it's being absorbed. And as this cooks down a little bit, we're going to take some of our warm stock. We're going to just barely cover this. And we're going to let it sit until it starts to sit. of making the risotto is consistently stirring it, adding liquid, letting it absorb, re-adding liquid. It's different than the more Eastern style of making rice where you add a large amount, cover and just let it cook and let it absorb slowly like that. 
Now, what option you have when cooking risotto by no means something you have to do, especially if you want to keep it vegetarian or low fat. But you can add milk or cream when you're adding liquid in for the rice grains to absorb. It will give you a slightly creamier texture. It will also lighten the color just a little bit. And much like the chicken stock, you're going to want to add it, barely cover it, and then cook it down until it's dry. And then add, add more fluid, stir, cook down, add more fluid, ad nauseum. And we've had our risotto going for a little over a half hour now. We've been slowly adding in liquid and watching the rice expand. And you can start to notice that it only cooked down but so much, it's reta retaining a creaminess through it, almost like an oatmeal. Part of that's just the starch from the rice coming out and starting to develop that gelatinous goo. But you also notice that the grains of rice have swelled up quite a bit. If you take a bite of them, they should start to feel kind of soft. Once they get to that point, you're gonna, if you'd like, you can start adding cheese. Start thinking places like Northern Italy or Switzerland. Possibly an Emmental, a Gruyere, a Grana Padano, a Fontina, Parmesan's, cheeses of the sort. It'll help bind this up, it'll give an extra richness to the dish. And it'll just make it better all over. <laughs> One, you've tasted it, it's got a nice soft taste to the top, to your teeth, and it's got this nice creamy texture. Topped with a little garnish, a nicely cooked risotto can be a wonderful meal on its own, more than just a starch to accompany, you know, a protein, although it's strong enough flavor that you can put it up against some of the most delectable meat dishes as well. Enjoy your risotto, and thanks for watching. I'm Eddie, the Skinhead Gourmet. Oi.